Welcome everyone to our international prayer meeting held every Tuesday night here live on Facebook and we're grateful that you're with us and the ones that will be joining sooner or later throughout the broadcast. Comment, let us know you're out there. Appreciate it. Some of you have already commented. I already have people from South Carolina and Virginia watching. So uh, if you have a prayer request or a praise report, go ahead while I'm speaking. On, uh, on the message tonight, uh, put it in the comment box. And we'll, that's laying it before the Lord, and uh, we will go right into praying over them as soon as the message is over. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together, asking His blessings together and His anointing in Jesus' name. We're going to pray. That's the only name He answers prayer in. That's the only name He saves anybody in does anything for us in the name of Jesus. Only way to the only way to heaven is Jesus. Amen. Father bless in the name of Jesus this international prayer meeting that you've established. We pray you'll bless everyone else that's having services around the world or reach outreaches tonight. May sinners be saved, may saints be given your wisdom, power and love and anointing. And we pray uh, also for the prodigals that used to serve you. They'll rededicate their lives. We pray for personal and national revival in the name of Jesus. And we know that your voice, like the song says, is the only voice that makes the difference. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, praise the Lord. Now, we will be speaking tonight on the ales of Calvary. Now, remember, we're preaching a series of sermons on the cross, A to Z to Calvary, of Calvary or the cross, each letter of the alphabet. We've already reached the letter L in this series of sermons. We want to uh, thank everyone up front for sharing the broadcast, inviting people to the broadcast, praying for the broadcast, supporting the broadcast. We appreciate it, but most important of all, the Lord Jesus appreciates it. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 9, preaching tonight on the L's of Calvary or the L's of the cross. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle and not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, 
neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered into want in, in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself uh, without uh, writing a name down of a pastor the Holy Ghost just reminded me of, sanctifies the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Uh, verse 15, and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that was under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must be, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. For a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the tester uh, lives. We'll stop right there tonight. I want to preach on the L's of Calvary. There are many L's surrounding the cross that you can find in the scriptures or uh, make reference point to. I'll give you a few in terms of introductions if you'd like to take notes on what the preacher or teacher or speaker preaches on. First of all, there's the land where Jesus died on the cross at. It was outside the city of Jerusalem, which is the epicenter of, uh, of the world, Israel. You also see the lips upon the cross. You have uh, lips of the rejecting sinner. You have the lips who died on uh, one side of Jesus on the cross. You have the, the lips of a receiving sinner who received Christ on the other cross that died with Jesus that day and you also have the lips of the Savior who proclamated seven proclamations from the cross and also his lips needed uh, were thirsty. Then you have the lacerations of the cross. You have the lacerations of the cross where they drove nails through his hands and through his feet and speared his side. Then you have those uh, that lingered around the cross. His friends, some of his friends were there. His mother was there. Her cousin was there. And Mary Magdalene was there. And John, the disciple, was there. Of course, there was enemies around the cross, too, that lingered. But tonight, we want to look at the last will and testament, the new covenant of Jesus Christ just for a few minutes the last will and testament number one we in the verses we read there are the facts of the will the last will of the Lord first of all we need to look uh, in understanding a will that means that the person who made up the will has something to leave for those who are in the will behind for their benefit we must realize tonight that Jesus, who is not only the Messiah and the Savior of the world, but he's God Almighty in the human flesh, the Lord of glory. We must understand he owns it all because he created it all. Psalms 50 verse 10 says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. One preacher said he owns the dirt under their hooves too. We see in Haggai chapter 2 verse 8 that all the gold and silver is mine, the Lord says. And then in Colossians 1 16, it says that Jesus created the entire universe and everything within the universe. So that's who, whose will we're talking about tonight. He left a will, a new covenant, a new testament for us tonight. Number one, it is written for us in the Word of God. If you have before you or you 
have near you a Bible that is God's will and testament. The last and New Testament is the New Covenant. It is a written will. We have it, the Word of God, the Bible. It is inspired. It is in inerrant. It is infallible. It's impeccable. And I can go on and on. Number two, in terms of speaking of the facts of the Lord's last will in New Testament, it is his last will to us. It is, it is finished, he said, not I am finished. The new covenant, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and all the benefits after you receive Christ. Number three, in order for a will to be legal, it must have two good witnesses. And God has God the Son has those two witnesses. Those two witnesses are God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Number four, this facts about the will. The will must have someone to leave the benefits to. Jesus told his disciples and us in the word of God, Fear not, little flock, for it is my good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom. What powerful verses. What a powerful promise from the most powerful person who ever lived on this earth. Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. The facts of the will. It is only enacted after the death of the tester. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead on the third day uh, certifies that his last will in New Testament is forever. It's an eternal New Testament will. The one who draws it up dies, and once he dies, it cannot be altered and changed. There's no one or no king, or listen tonight, I need to say this. There is no political movement, no groups of people, no nation, no nations, no individual, no, uh, no rich, uh, powerful, no one, no one, poor, middle class, whoever it may be, throughout on this earth, the devil himself, the antichrist, the false prophet, on and on we can go. No evil power or no human power, no matter how great in number they are, can alter or change the word of God. Other words, including the United States. The United States can come and go. Whatever kingdoms can come and go. The Bible is forever settled forever in heaven. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And once the death of the tester, there must be an executor of that will. Jesus is the executor of his own will. Think about it. He arose from the dead on the third day. And he's alive forevermore. He'll never die again. He's eternal. He's an eternal executor of his own eternal will. So number one, we have the facts of the will. Number two, I want to look at the furnishings of the will. Let me give you a few of them that, are, that the Lord gives us in his will. Now, if you'll look back, in the Word of God, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, the Bible says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoken, spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to, uh, unto us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, 
and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself when he had by himself purged our sins set down on the right hand of the majesty on high jesus christ the lord of glory who's a sitting at the right hand of the father in the night eternally alive forevermore he has given us some of the contents of his will number one the saints of god are in his will if you're born again and washed in the blood you're one of his children in his family you have put your trust your soul's trust in jesus christ as your lord and savior you are in the family of god number two we have the scriptures of that will the old and new testament the 66 books of the word of god the bible number three we have the spirit of god who is given to every believer in christ when you get saved number four he gives us songs to sing to him spiritual songs through the power and presence of the holy spirit number five he has given us the called out churches the local churches uh, the called out ones the congregations tonight we have a lot more could be added and and taught and spoke of tonight but that's just five of uh, that are furnished in the will of the lord jesus christ but number three, it's unfortunate there are, uh, there is a failure in relationship to the uh, will of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the failure of some to be in the will at all. There are many tonight, I'm talking billions, billions tonight, that the Lord is dealing with and they refuse to repent and trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They refuse to leave their idols and their false gods and whatever behind in their sins. They refuse, they reject, and they are lost. And the wrath of God abides on them even as they are breathing and walking his air that he's given them. And if they die in that condition, they will die and go straight to hell. And we'll never get out. There's no parole. There's no probation. There's no early release program. The only time they'll get out is at the great white throne of judgment when in Revelation 20 verses 11 through 15 where God will bring them out of hell and they will be judged before the entirety of the universe that's there on that day and, and shown why he is sending them to the everlasting lake of fire. And why are they why is God going to send them there? Because they, they refused to repent and receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. And because they rejected Christ, their name is not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And God has no choice but to ban them from heaven for all of eternity into the lake of fire. That's going to happen, friend. As sure as we know, listen, we know it's going to happen because of a surety it's in the bible the word of god 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 can't lie so we need to realize that if we're saved tonight and we're born again because if you're saved you are born again you're adopted into the family of god and because of that we are no longer his enemies but his friend his friend and family we are a friend of god through jesus christ and we should rejoice tonight like Jesus told the disciples that our names are written in heaven in the Lamb's Book of Life. So tonight, let's pray for all of those tonight that do not know Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, that they will be saved before it's everlasting too late. All right, praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed that message on the cross next Tuesday night. We'll be speaking on the M's of Calvary. The M's of Calvary. Amen. All right, let's see if we have any prayer requests or praise reports. And uh, we'll get right to lay them out before the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, wait a minute. I hit the wrong button. I'll sure be glad when the Lord raises the money through people 
and through myself, which I've already given to the offering to buy a new computer system. Uh, hopefully, it'll have a bigger screen and everything. Because I tell you, it's, this gets kind of sticky sometimes dealing with the situation. All right, we have one on there tonight, which I've already had that wrote, written down. But we have a few tonight. Pam in North Carolina said her mother fell and cut her forehead and blackened her eye, but she didn't break any bones, thank the Lord. But the fall is bad enough. We pray for her healing. We have uh, Alexander and his wife, or they have pneumonia. We're praying for them. And also Freddie Cook, who is battling cancer, uh, asked us to remember him in prayer tonight. And I had my, let's see here. Bubba surgery tonight. That's my son-in-law. Has upcoming uh, surgery. So we're asking for healing and full recovery for him. Anybody else give him just, I appreciate it. I'm not much, just trying to follow the Lord. That's all I can do. <laughs> Amen. Our glory of the cross, like the Apostle Paul, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I hope these cross sermons are blessing you like they're blessing me. All right. I don't see any other prayer requests. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we corporately come together and we lay these that we've already mentioned before you. We pray for healing. We pray for recovery. We pray for blessing, breakthroughs. And we pray also that you will uh, bless us as we have a, uh, the rest of the night and give us a great day tomorrow. Continue to anoint and keep your hand on us to be a blessing for your kingdom. Bless our Facebook outreach. Bless our YouTube outreach. Bless our Instagram outreach. Connect us with who you want us to be connected with. Continue to uh, grow us in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we pray blessings on those like Brother Mark and others that help us in the preparing my you know, wife setting up everything and everyone else that helps us uh, get everything put on YouTube and stuff like that. We pray that you will bless them. Bless us. Uh, bless our family, friends and our fellowships, and uh, also bless our faith in you and our future and our families. In Jesus' name, as we are getting ready to quote Psalms 91 over all of us tonight in closing our international prayer meeting. Bless those who uh, help us by sharing on the broadcast on Facebook and every other way that they try to help us. We pray that you'll bless them too and what they're trying to do for the Lord. Uh, uh, keep your hand on us. Tomorrow night, I just got a message uh, as soon as the, the computer seemed to be messed up here for a little bit tonight. That's why I was on late, later than eight. But we thank God we were able to get on here and get her done for you. Uh, be with me tomorrow night and the thousands of speakers and preachers around the world. Uh, that'll be speaking for you in Jesus name, anoint us and use us for your glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Uh, we had, let's see, praise the Lord for this broadcast and all ministries. Yeah. They glorify God. That's right. All right. Have your Bible quote Psalm 91 and we'll, I was asleep. I fell asleep. After supper tonight, I was able to see my dad today. That was a good thing. Hadn't seen him since February. Like most Americans shut down and all this because of this pandemic we were in and still in. Psalms 91. Give you time to turn there. Psalms 91. Verse 1, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. 
surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near, come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation in Jesus' name. Uh, and as I was reading those verses, the Holy Spirit reminded me there's uh, two other preachers uh, that have contacted this virus, very well-known national speakers. Uh, John Hagee has contacted, has been infected with the COVID flu, and also uh, Greg Lowry, very huge churches, one in California one in Texas, both of them, uh, we need to pray for them tonight. All COVID, uh, whatever it is, flu, to be healed. Uh, remember them, Dr. John Hagee and Greg Lowry. And so uh, we pray for them, and we're thankful for uh, the Lord healing everyone that's had this flu that's looked to Jesus for the healing. And also uh, those he has healed. And also for John Hagee tonight and Greg Lowry, brothers in the Lord, we pray for healing for them. All right, we'll see y'all tomorrow. I'm trying to think, I have to, I'll go ahead and do one broadcast tomorrow because I have to go back to sleep before I get up and go to work tomorrow night. Oh, we got church tomorrow night. So what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'll do a 12 o'clock, uh, my wife was telling, telling me there, trying to help me, I heard her in there say 12. Let's look at the verses that we're looking at for tomorrow. Um, I don't know if I've given them to you yet, Brother Mark. Uh. Well, let's look. I think I, I'm going to be speaking. Can't remember which one I left on. Uh, verse 12. Let's, let's start in verse 11. So tomorrow I'll speak on at 12 on the Word from Word broadcast. John chapter 4, verse 11 through... 15. We'll do that tomorrow. All right. Thank you for listening to me speak tonight. All the glory goes to Jesus. And also, uh, thank you for uh, visiting with us at our international prayer meeting. And uh, let's pray that the Lord continue to keep his hand on what we're trying to do here on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. We hope all of you have a wonderful night of rest, no matter where you're at watching from the world or the United States. Uh, God bless you. God bless the United States. And also, God bless the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. So until tomorrow at noon, thank you for joining us tonight. But most of all, we're thankful Jesus was with us tonight. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow at noon.